Okay, so now that my edges are all burnished, I'm gonna put on the top coat for the sealer. So I'm going to use some Phoebing's Neutral Resoline. I have done a, a previous video where I compare some Resoline Super Sheen and Aussie Conditioner, and I didn't like the Resoline because when you put it on with a, a towel or a rag like it suggests or a damp cloth, it really pulls the dye off. So what I ended up with was a lot of streaks. I found that if I use a really soft paintbrush and just very gently paint the Resoline on, I won't get that effect. Another thing that was happening is when the Resoline goes on, if it leaves bubbles, those bubbles kind of harden and then they leave behind patchy spots. Um, so I made the mistake of shaking this Try not to shake it or else you're going to get those bubbles and you want to make sure that you really brush those bubbles out so that way it doesn't dry with those, those bubbles. Alternatively, I've made some really cool bracers where I intentionally put it on with a lot of bubbles, let the bubble sit for a second and then buff it out immediately. And what happened was the bubbles pulled the dye off in a really cool spotted pattern that just really made them look rustic. So there's a way to use that to your advantage. I'm going to use another a coat of Aussie over top of it. So I'm not too concerned about getting it on too thick. In fact, I want to make sure that it's thin because I don't want to have it leave any marks or anything on the leather. I did the other side already and I did a really nice you know up and down pattern I kind of went all over with this one so I would just try to keep going in the same direction and brush it all out. So now that I've kind of figured out how to use the Resoline I kind of like it. Um, it definitely is a nice waterproofer. The Aussie conditioner isn't bad, but it is nothing compared to the Resoline. What I am going to do though is just do the Aussie on the inside because that comes in less contact with materials that are going to cause it to bleed, such as, you know, getting wet or just the oils from your hand. So there's less waterproofing that needs to be done on the inside. So as a result, I'm just going to use the Aussie on the inside. Oh, sorry, you can't see me doing the uh, binding. And I already did the other side before I started recording. I'm going to give that a second to dry and then I'm going to, to buff it out. So what I found really cool is on Amazon for about $8 for five pounds, you can get scraps of t-shirts, um, much bigger than this. They're like full-size t-shirts. I put, cut this off of it, and this is a really nice soft polishing cloth um, that works out perfectly for putting on the, the Aussie or buffing the dye or really anything that you need a soft cloth for. I'm just going to go over and just buff any excess off, buff out any streaks. Don't necessarily have to be super, super light touch on this one. Just go ahead and buff it out. Another thing is the um, both the Aussie and the Resoline kind of darken this blue color a little bit. Um, it doesn't seem to happen with all dyes, but it definitely does happen with the blue. So when I started, if it wasn't going to darken it, I probably would have wanted to put on another coat of dye, but I knew it was going to darken it, so I left it as is. So I have this one compared to this one. This one I haven't put the finish on yet. This one I have, so it's 
definitely, you know, these looked identical before I started, and now there's quite a difference. So it's good to really know how your dies are going to look when you're done, and you can only really do that by getting used to it and playing around with it, because there was a lot of times where I kept going on with more coats and kept trying to change the color of the die, but everything changes in the end. So really getting to know how your die is going to react with different materials, how it's going to react when it's dry, um, is the only way you can really know what your color is going to turn out to be. So this is actually turning out to be the exact color I want, and I think that a lot of that is the Rosaline, so I'm really happy with how this is turning out. Okay, so now that I got the Rosaline on there, I'm going to add my top coat, which is an Aussie leather conditioner. Um, a lot of times I'll actually just use the Aussie conditioner, um, but as I said before, now that I kind of like the way the Rosaline works, I might start using that first and then the Aussie. The Aussie does do a good job waterproofing, but I've had some, some mishaps with it. Just starting with the inside, especially since I didn't Aussie the inside, so I want to make sure that I get a nice, nice good coating. Or I didn't Rosaline the inside. I just get a bunch on my hands and rub it into the book. Because I didn't use Rosaline on this side, it's really going to absorb um, in here, so you have to use a lot of it. I got these gloves um, at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. I would recommend just getting a nice pair of snug gloves. I used to use plastic, like, medical gloves, but I found that during this process, they would actually start to tear, and then I'd get the Aussie on my hands, and that drives me insane. I hate the way this stuff feels. I have to wash my hands with some boiling hot water every time that happens, so I have to use the gloves. <laughs> also, and I don't know what it is, but there's like a texture on these, and it just feels like it massages the, the conditioner into the leather better. That could all be in my head. I don't know. That's the Madam K way, so that's how I do it. I have another one of my t-shirts here. I keep this aside, and I use it specifically for my Aussie, so I don't cross over and use these for anything else. And just buff it out. You'll see that with the Aussie, the blue comes off with the Rosaline. We saw that didn't happen. Um, probably could have buffed this a little bit before even applying the Aussie. That might have helped that come out too. But as long as you do a good job buffing it, it'll prevent it prevent it from coming off later on. I'm not going to try to do it to where it's completely dry, just smooth it out a little bit. And it, it does a good job actually kind of slicking back the rough side of the leather too if you buff it really good. I think that the texture on the gloves might do that a little bit as well. Some people will try to use a slicker to smooth that out. Um, and then I'm just going to take a little bit of the Aussie. Because I did the Rosaline already, it doesn't, it's not taking as much. It's not absorbing as quickly, so a little bit goes a longer way here. If I didn't do the Rosaline, I would put a lot more on. I would let it sit for about 10 minutes before I buffed it off and that would give it the ability to soak into the leather a little bit and make sure that it's nice and waterproof. As a result, that also makes the leather um, really much darker. If I had just used the Aussie and put it on this book and let it soak for about 10, 20 minutes, I would get much more of a uh, midnight blue or more consistent with the way the evening blue actually looks in the picture. See like that? It's a very dark blue in the picture. Um, I would definitely get something more similar to that. It helps a lot that I have the wood block in between. It just helps me get that pressure so it's not flopping all over the place while I try to, to do this. Okay, I'm 
it's still a little bit tacky. So I'm going to let that dry out for a little bit before I move on to the next step. Not completely necessary, but just so I don't get it all over my hands, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll see you in a little bit.